Hi everyone, my name is Bandeep and welcome to my YouTube channel. In today's video, uh, we are going to discuss about support vector machine uh, classifier using Python code. In previous video, we discussed about uh, its concepts using whiteboard. So in today's video, we are what we are going to do, we are going to create a model and uh, we are going to predict uh, using uh, our data set, which is Iris data set. This Iris data set is um comes with the uh, lies with the uh, uh, scikit learn or sql learn library so let's get started first i'm going to tell you about the iris data set the data set that we are going to use uh, this is the data set you uh, go to google and uh, mark uh, write uh, iris data set and you uh, sql learn iris data set then you can come here so iris data set is basically a data set you can think of that there are three different type of flower and you are given uh, their uh, uh, sepal length sepal width petal length petal width for each data uh, and you need to classify or you need to find what type of flower it is based on their uh, sepal length sepal width or petal length petal width so this is the data set that we are going to use one uh, the uh, one reason for which I have chosen this data set is since this data set is with the uh, SQLN library. Uh, so this data is, uh, is very clean. So we do not need to do uh, uh, the things we have to do uh, in case of real world, like doing exploratory data analysis, uh, handling missing values, doing feature engineering, all those stuff. Since this data set is very clean and everything is up to mark. So we are going to skip all those steps here. We will directly jump. Uh, we will first load the data. We'll directly and um, jump onto the model creation and all the next steps. So let's get started. So uh, very first, I'm just importing the basic libraries, NumPy, Matplotlib and sklearn. And from sklearn, if you observe that in this line, I am using, uh, I am importing data sets as well. So, what it will do, uh, data sets dot load iris. What it will do, it will. Um, there are lots of, uh, I mean, not lots of. There are few data sets available with this library. So, for loading each respective data, they have uh, their respective method. So, if I'll do data sets dot load iris. So it will load the iris data for me. And uh, I have assigned that into iris variable. And in this example, I am just going to take two features, not all the four features, because even two features can serve our purpose here. So what I'm going to do uh, here is from iris.data, I'm taking all the rows. That means I'm taking all the uh, rows and only taking the uh first two features only taking the two columns so and uh, assigning that into x that means this is my feature uh matrix or feature uh, independent features and this is my target variable iris dot target if you tap iris and then dot target uh, do this it will give you the uh, target variable into this variable uh, target uh, variable values into this y variable and uh, if you want to take a look uh, you can see that iris dot feature name these are the features that means these are the column names and if you want to take a look on x there you can simply do uh, x uh, you can see that only two columns are here uh, this represents the sepal length and this represents the sepal width we have taken first two columns and this is next record then this is next record and the similar way all these are the records and if you want to take a look of uh, y values uh, i mean uh, in how many type of uh, uh, categories are there or how many type of uh, our target variable is so you can do this iris dot target name it will give you see setosa versicolor and virginica so these that means we have to classify among these three classes 
uh, then you can do uh, to check more you can do uh, iris store then make a tab and it will give you the options available and then you can check whatever you want to do in this case uh, the feature name uh, target and target name i have already used because uh, these are of use these are useful for us in this particular scenario uh, otherwise uh, you can check at your own requirement after that uh, what i am doing uh, i am just splitting my uh, data into uh, train and test this is a standard procedure that we do uh, so this is also available in sql and library train test split the same thing i'm doing again passing x feature uh, features um, independent features uh, y is our target uh, target val uh, variable and x are our independent features and um, you can say they are kind of metrics or data frame um, test size represents that how much of the data we want to keep for our testing purpose after that uh, what i'm going to do uh, using svm uh, which i have just imported here from sklearn import svm and uh, um, what i'm going to do i am doing to do since we are do, going to do classification so uh, i'm using svc uh, it will create a classifier object for me and then these are the parameters if i will uh, do not give these parameters uh, uh, so it will take the default value of these parameters if i am giving then it will override so for kernel i am mentioning here linear and for c uh, i am mentioning 10 so kernel uh, as i told you in previous video kernel is something you can imagine that uh, Kernel is something which basically helps us to uh, uh, visualize or kind of convert a low dimensional problem into high dimensional. And after that, once a low dimensional problem is converted into high dimension, then uh, it makes easy for us to do a, a right classification. Uh, so, so uh, for example, if we have a 2D problem, and in some of the cases, uh, I told you in my previous example as well that uh, how we can uh, how we solved that using uh, kernel technique, and then we uh, we converted that particular problem from 2D to 3D. And once uh, we have increased the dimension, then we were able to segregate among the classes. So that is the kernel. Kernel value could be linear, RBF, and poly uh, polynomial. So we can check this uh, values uh, for this parameter on their official site as well c is basically c is the parameter which basically um, uh, which basically tells us the uh, svm optimization uh, that means svm tell c basically tells the svm optimization how much you want to avoid misclassifying is training example that means if you remember my previous video in previous video i told you that in a scenario we had two uh, classifiers or two hyperplane which were dividing the same data into two different category but one classifier or one hyperplane was having less margin among the classes and the another was having the uh, more margin as a general thumb rule uh, the classifier which has more margin or more gap among the classes that we should prefer that because it is clearly uh, classifying those uh, those data or into different classes um, but i also told you an exception that uh, in some cases we go with the classifier which has small margin but no error so uh, case was that uh, we had two classifier one classifier has more margin but it has some classification error and the, uh, the another case was like we have uh, less margin but there is no classification error so we picked uh, the uh, we picked uh, the classifier with low margin uh, or the hyperplane with low margin um, the same thing c tells the svm optimizer that if c has higher value it tells that we can pick uh, the hyperplane which has less margin among the classes so that's the idea behind c and uh, then i'm doing fit that means i'm training over my training data set 
after that now my model is created i'm going to predict it using x test uh, and i am uh, received those value into y pred variable and then i'm going to check how my model is performing using svc dot score so you can see that here 7.78 that means around 78 percent of accuracy is here in this model but that's not the point um, i mean uh, that is good accuracy uh, we can also uh, think more on how we can improve that part but as of now uh, i want to show you how this uh, this whole thing works or how old, how this hyperplane is created how um, it looks so for that, what I'm do, going to do, uh, so I am taking my X feature and Y uh, Y target variable array. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to plot all those things onto a 2D uh, plot, and then you would be able to visualize how those things works. So for doing that thing, uh, what I'm doing from X, uh, I am finding first minimum value and then finding the maximum value uh, for and after that the similar way i am finding the, the minimum value and maximum value for y after that what i am doing uh, i am kind of arranging those arrays these uh, those arrays into uh, starting from x mean start it will go till uh, x max with a step size of h and h is calculated as x max by x mean divided by 100 so uh, this is one array and this is another array so you can think of that there is an x array which has uh, started from some minimum value and at each uh, the next element differ from a constant size which is 0 0.026 which we just calculated so that means if my first point is 3 3.0 then my uh, next uh, next value will be 3.02 then 3.04 uh, till uh, the my maximum value and then what i am doing fr uh, from that from these two linear arrays one dimensional arrays i am creating a 2d rectangular grid using mesh grid method in uh, which is there in numpy array uh, sorry numpy library so it will give me a 2D, uh, 2D rectangular grid. So after that, now uh, to plot all these things uh, on, on, on a uh, plot, scatter plot, uh, what I'm do, going to do, uh, I'm doing a plot dot subplot. Uh, this, that means one one means that this figure has one row, one column, and this plot has uh, is the first plot. And um, then what I'm doing, uh, I'm doing the pred prediction using um, that means my predicted values my y pred um, my xx my xx was a two dimensional array revel will what it will do so it will convert a, again into it will flatten it it will convert into one dimensional array and similarly it will convert y into one dimensional array and then i am passing these into uh, my uh, prediction function and uh, so you can think of that z is holding my predicted values then uh, i am what i am going to do my uh, i am converting the again reshaping the z which holds the predicted values and what is the shape xx dot shape that means whatever the shape of x is reshape z into the same shape and then um, I am plotting a contour f. Contour f means it will create contours in that rectangular grid. You can think of that uh, there is a rectangle and there are, let's say, two or three lines which are kind of dividing your rectangle into three different regions inside that particular rectangle. Then I am plotting the y predicted value on onto those and then label and x and y label and then title and show so let me run it then you will be able to relate it more so basically what i'm going to do here is that so see this is my uh, 2d graph uh, 2d graph uh, or plot these are my contours one is like purple uh, this yellow and green now why my three that means 
because we had three type of flower so that means given the data i have uh, so that means this purple region reflects one type of flower yellow region reflects another type of flower and uh, this green uh, triangle uh, green triangle inside this represents the third type of flower and these dots which are kind of you know uh, on top of it these are the my predicted values so if i uh, comment this line for one second play, uh, plot dot scatter then you can see that my all the predicted values are vanished so these are the contours contours means regions inside this uh, 2d uh, 2d uh, kind of you know rectangle these are three different categories so that means uh, one category is my purple another is green and third is my um, yellow based on my sepal length and sepal width so, so for example if some flower has sepal length let's say uh, 4.5 and uh, per, uh, sepal width let's say 1.5 that means that belongs to this green category now uh, if i again uh, uncomment this line and then run it so what it will do my prediction will come and will be printed uh, will kind of reflect here so that means these are these these lines which are kind of dividing each other these are the these are my kernel or you can say uh, i mean not kernel exactly these are my hyperplanes uh, using the technique of kernel which is of linear type since i have passed linear kernel here you can see these are kind of you know linear lines or linear hyperplanes dividing uh, data into three different categories now if i take uh, my kernel value as let's say some another value rbf and i'm going to do all this stuff uh, again uh, all this stuff means that plotting it again so i am what i am going what i am doing here different is only the thing that uh, using uh, changing the value of kernel that only and c is same and gamma is uh, gamma i am going to tell you gamma is what gamma has uh, has a role so now i i have changed my kernel and changed kernel means that means uh, the way i am going to create hyperplane among my uh, data points now it has changed uh, earlier it was linear that means you can imagine that there are uh, 10 balls lying on a table and you are given three uh, three scales uh, and then you ha you have like uh, divided those ball into three different regions using those uh, straight line or those scales so that was linear and in rbf rbf is uh, i think radial uh, some uh, radial some function i forgot about the um, you know full form so the way i am going to kind of create hyperplane is going to change so if i run the same code again i am running the same code of you know plotting this uh, thing i am just changed my kernel and now you can see that see now how my uh, how my uh, these things are uh, these are categorized so if i uh, if i for the timing if i remove those uh, my predicted values so what will happen now you see that now i have used some curve to categorize things earlier i was using lines that means uh, i am telling uh, svm to uh, using this uh, parameter kernel parameter when i say kernel is equal to linear that means i am saying my svm that okay divide or classify this data using some linear line or hyperplane into the respective categories let's say we have three uh, type of categories and here i am saying that no don't use uh, straight lines or hyperplanes use rbf uh, then uh, it has uh, you can see that how it has you know uh, this this these curves are representing 
and if i plot this uh, predicted value on top of it this is how it looks see this is how it looks and one more thing you can see that inside uh, when i have used rbf here uh, my rbf here my score has come to 0 0.68 and uh, that means uh, my score has come down of predicting score that means this mode of kernel is not doing good uh, in this case so this is how we can try different uh, different uh, values for this parameter and then we can pick the best one which can uh, you know which can give you the better uh, accuracy or better better prediction uh, gamma i am going to tell you is so gamma i have not used here huh. so if i will uh, if i will use higher the value of gamma it will try to exact fit that means uh, it will make an over overfitting so let's say here i am using gamma as a 10 now you can see that these are how this is how my classes are uh, you know these data points are classified using these curves if i let's say uh, if i change the value of gamma to 100 here and then run it again then you can see that my uh, score has also dipped and if i plot then you you can clearly see that see here how it is trying to uh, classify these uh, these data points it has come more uh, come more close it is doing kind of overfitting and uh, so that's why uh, it is restricting itself to respective data points only so this is how uh, it is doing uh, overfitting and what will happen if overfitting is there uh, during testing when we will run it on actual test data our uh, our you know prediction accuracy will come down our score will come down so that's what is happening here so you can see that 0 0.65 it has come to 65 percent so this is all about svm guys you guys can try by yourself you can play around with different values of these parameters how these actually affect uh, you can visualize um, uh, as a standard practice that i follow i am going to upload this uh, notebook uh, notebook on my uh, github repo and will drop that link into my description of this video and you can check it anytime so that's all for this video uh, till then bye bye take care and as a last thing uh, if you guys like my work and uh, so please uh, like subscribe my channel and leave a comment if you want something specific to be covered i'm working on machine learning playlist and uh, don't try uh, don't uh, forget to uh, you know press the bell icon as well because next time I'm going to upload a video, you will be able to um, notify me very easily. So till then, bye bye, take care, see you, thank you.